Welcome to this brief Bible dive with beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and with me, Pastor Nick. Uh, we're going to do something special with this and the next two brief Bible dives. Um, this one is, uh, it's one of three that make a set. And what we're discussing is the three gifts that the Magi brought to the young Jesus. Uh, and, you know, when they, and this is where they appear, and, you know, where those gifts appear, not just in that story of the Magi, but uh, in other Bible stories as well, uh, what the symbolism also is behind those gifts. And so the first one we're going to, uh, uh, our first topic is gold. You know, they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, many people actually believe that the Magi brought gold as a gift for the young Jesus because it was something that one would bring a king. Uh, you know, the Magi were not looking for a savior of the world. Uh, no, you know, they weren't even looking for some anointed person from God. The Bible simply tells us that they were looking for the king of the Jews. So what better gift to bring a king than to bring gold? Uh, we might imagine that the Magi were actually pretty surprised upon finding Jesus in a house in Bethlehem uh, and not in the king's palace in Jerusalem. Uh, and yes, the, the Bible says that they actually visited him in a house, not a stable or a cave or something else. We actually think Jesus was probably up to maybe about two years old when they visited. The story, uh, Matthew 2, uh, verse 11, um, this part of the story tells us, quote, On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, now, remember, again, found in a house, not in a stable. Um, and they went first to Jerusalem to find him. And why? Because, well, that's the capital. Of course, that's where you would go to find a king that would be born. Um, they instead encountered Herod, who, you know, knew nothing of this. Uh, but either way, gold has always been something sought after by people throughout history and especially has a bit of a royal uh, a royal tint or a shine to it, so to speak. Uh, gold is beautiful. Gold is rare. Uh, gold is also pretty durable. Uh, humans have sought it, as I mentioned. Uh, we've got uh, all sorts of records going back a long time, and it holds a special place in the Bible, too. Gold is mentioned, actually, more frequently in the Bible than any other metal. Um, somewhere just under 400 times. I think it's 300 and sometimes, uh, 370 sometimes in the Bible that gold is mentioned. Uh, in fact, and this is often overlooked, um, but in the very beginning of the Bible, we hear about gold in the story of the Garden of Eden. Now, the reason we probably overlook this is because we're focusing on a whole bunch of other stuff happening in the garden, you know, forbidden fruits and talking, forbidden fruit, talking serpents, uh, the fall, all sorts of things. But but gold is there, and this is where we hear it. Uh, Genesis 2, verses 10 through 12 states, quote, A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon, and it, it, is, it is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedalium and onyx stone are there. Uh, so that's, that's, you know, we hear it right there in the beginning, and again, I, I always forget it's there, because again, focusing on talking serpents, forbidden fruit, and a bunch of other stuff that really captures the imagination. Well, later on, after the in the in the Bible um, in the book of Exodus, after the Hebrew slaves have escaped captivity in Egypt, uh, and remember they were able to take the gold of, some of the gold of Egypt with them, uh, they were wandering in the wilderness, and Moses went up the mountain um, to speak with God to receive the Ten Commandments from uh, to receive message the, the commandments from God, and the people melted down the gold that they had taken from Egypt and turned it into a golden bull, and they began to worship the bull. And in this act, the gold actually became the people's God. It became the object of their worship. Uh, now, you know, maybe when we even think about our current culture, people's current obsession with wealth, um, we see, well, the glimmer, so to speak, of that obsession still alive. Uh, maybe the gold itself isn't the object of worship, but, but the wealth, which is represented by gold, certainly is. 
And we're, wor we're warned against the worship of gold and material goods in the Bible. Uh, notably, I think of uh, Zephaniah 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, uh, A. That's the first half of that verse uh, when we hear the following. Quote, neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. Now, when Jesus sent his 12 apostles on a missionary expedition, he taught them not to trust in possessions. He's quoted in Matthew 10, 9 as stating to them, quote, take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. Now, now gold, even though it's been on um, the object of worship, it, it's also on sort of the flip side, been used in worshipful arts and objects. So gold was used to make parts of the Ark of the Covenant, that Ark being the, the box that had a lot of gold as part of it that carried the Ten Commandments, the manna from the wilderness, uh, Aaron's staff, um, it was also used extensively in the building of the first and second Jewish temples. But it's important to remember that with the Ark and with those temples, gold was not intended to be the object of worship, but rather a tool to enhance worship, a tool for worship, a tool to honor God, not to be the God itself. In the New Testament, Peter actually used gold as an analogy then for how our faith can be tested and purified. In 1 Peter 1, 6-7, Peter wrote, quote, In this you rejoice, if, uh, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. In other words, as we go through difficult things in life, you know, gold has these impurities in it. And, and when it's put to the fire, the impurities are burned away and that pure gold remains. So for the same for us, when we go through trials and tribulations in life, the some of those impurities of life can be burned away and the that pure part of our faith can remain. And finally, in uh I mean, there's so many other references, but uh, coming to mind in the revelation of Jesus to John, we, we learn a little bit of a description of heaven. And in the middle of this description of what this of what heaven would look like, described as this city, this new Jerusalem, we hear the following in Revelation 21, verses 18 through 21. The wall is built of jasper, while the city is pure gold, clear as glass. The foundations of the wall of the city are adorned with every jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysol uh, chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, chrysoprase, <laughs> the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth the twelfth amethyst, uh, uh, and the twelfth the twelve gates are twelve pearls. Each of the gates is a single pearl, and the street of the city is pure gold, transparent as glass. That's where we get that concept of the streets of heaven are paved with gold. But even just to think of a, a gold so pure that it's clear, can't even imagine what that must be. So as we listen to these descriptions, gold has certainly been highly valued throughout history, as well as highly valued throughout the Bible and by those who wrote down the Bible. So we know that the Magi obviously valued gold. They brought it in a treasure chest, after all. Um, and when we, we also know that the Magi, though, did not bring the gold to the young Jesus so that people would worship the gold. Instead, the Magi brought gold so that they could give it as a gift to this recently born king. Now, we can't know for sure if they um, eventually learned of all of the babies the young or the young child really's uh, spiritual importance, um, or if they kind of accidentally stumbled on the right thing with all of their gifts for Jesus. Uh, but either way, the symbolism is clearly on display with this piece of gold that Jesus is a king, and that the possessions were given as a gift to the king, the king who, as we know, is actually king of the universe. So thanks for joining with me, Pastor Nick, and with beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Uh, we'd love for you to subscribe, share this with uh, anybody that you'd uh, like to share it with. And there's going to be two more of these, on Frank, one on frankincense 
and one on myrrh, uh, objects that we maybe don't hear about quite as much as gold in our lives. Uh, if you do want to learn more about our congregation, our website is bslcmi.org. And of course, uh, we just love that you take part in these things. So go out and love God and love your neighbors.